all the energy on our planet Earth comes from the sun. But we humans, much like every other animal, are not able to directly harvest the energy that comes from the sun. Plants do this work for us. In their leaves, plants contain a green pigment called chlorophyll that enables them to use the energy from the sun to combine water and carbon dioxide and turn them into oxygen and the sugar glucose. This process is called photosynthesis. Glucose is the most abundant sugar in nature, and it stores the energy coming from the sun in a form that can then be used by plants and animals as well. Glucose can also be further processed to other more complex carbohydrates such as starch for longer term energy storage, or even transformed to other nutrients such as lipids, amino acids, or vitamins, sometimes incorporating minerals that are found in the soil. By eating plants or animals who previously ate plants, we can get these molecules and use them to sustain our own life. Without plants on this planet, we would not be able to survive. We would still have plenty of energy coming from the sun, but no way of using it. It would be like being thirsty in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by water, but water we cannot drink. Carbohydrates are at the basis of human diet the world all over. Rice, pasta, bread, potatoes, cassava, banana, corn are staple foods for billions of people and are primarily sources of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate means hydrated carbon. Indeed, that's what the plants do when they combine water and carbon dioxide to make glucose. They split water into oxygen and hydrogen and add these molecules to carbon, creating energy-rich bonds. When these bonds will be broken down, they will be able to release the energy that they store. This process, which is cellular respiration, is basically the opposite of photosynthesis and is what happens inside all of our cells to extract energy from nutrients. This molecule is glucose, also called dextrose. It contains six atoms of carbons bound to each other and to atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. The primary function of glucose is, of course, an energetic one. It gives us four kilocalories per gram. Glucose is not our only source of energy. We can also get energy from other carbohydrates, as well as fat and proteins. However, glucose is the easiest molecule to get energy from. It is readily available fuel for all of our cells. It also has another big advantage. In emergency situations when our oxygen supply is limited, for example during intense physical activity, we can extract some energy from glucose even without oxygen, whereas for example we cannot burn any fat without oxygen. For this reason, while fat is our main fuel at rest and during light activity, glucose becomes our main fuel during intense physical activity, when blood and oxygen supply to our muscle cells become scarce. But this doesn't mean that we don't need glucose for energy even when we are at rest. Glucose is always necessary to completely burn fats for energy. Without the intermediate molecules that derive from glucose breakdown, fats can only be broken down partially and release their energy incompletely. Like biochemists like to say, fat burns on the flame of carbs. On top of that, there are some tissues in our body that can get their energy only from glucose. These include our brain, our nervous system in general, and our red blood cells. For all these reasons, we must have a certain amount of glucose circulating in our bloodstream at all times. And as we will soon learn, our body goes to extreme lengths to ensure that a constant supply of glucose is always maintained. For example, in emergency situations when blood glucose levels start to dangerously drop, our body can build its own glucose, starting from proteins. But this is a waste because proteins are normally used for more important structural and regulatory functions. Besides, since our body doesn't store extra protein, we may need to steal these proteins from our lean mass, for example, our muscles. So this, indirectly, is another important function of glucose. It spares precious proteins from being used as sources of glucose and energy. Another important function of blood glucose is to signal hunger and satiety. You already know that a high or raising blood glucose signals that it's time to stop eating, while a low or dropping blood glucose signals that it's time to eat again.
So to recap, these are the main functions of glucose in our body. It provides readily available energy for our body at rest and during light activity. It is the only source of energy during intense anaerobic physical activity. It provides energy for our brain, nervous system, and red blood cells at all times. It allows an efficient utilization of fats for energy. It spares proteins from use as source of energy and blood glucose, and its blood variations signal hunger and satiety. Glucose and other sugars also play more fine-tuned structural and regulatory functions in our body. For example, they are often used as tags for molecules to traffic them inside our cells or indicate their destination. They are also part of complex structures on the surface of our cell membranes that play a role in signaling cell-cell communication, recognition, and immunity. Cell surface glycosaminoglycans protect and lubricate our joints and most of our tissues. A particular sugar Ribose is a key structural component of our DNA. All these advanced functions of sugars, however, are not strictly relevant from a nutritional point of view, because nutritionally, sugars are non-essential. This means that our body can easily interconvert sugars into one another or build them starting from other molecules. So whenever it needs to build a particular sugar-containing molecule, it can easily build the sugar components it needs without having to get them directly from food. This is not possible, for example, for many amino acids involved in protein synthesis as well as some lipids.